Hello and welcome to my game development. I thought it would be a good idea to document my journey for those interested as well. And at least I'll have this video in the future to look back on documenting this. Within this video, I will go across what I have managed to pull off during the development of one of my first games. However, I would call this my first real game that I'm planning on either making it a full game, which will release in the future, or at least take a lot of components from to a new project. Because there is a chance the project becomes potentially too big, or something just goes wrong, or I need to start fresh. But hopefully that won't happen. I'll keep this intro short. I don't want to. I don't want you falling asleep already. This is only the start. <laughs> Here we are, day one. This was, this all started in somewhere in January. That was like three or four months ago. Probably, f yeah, four months ago, I would say. Now, I do gotta mention, I didn't start completely fresh, I'm sorry. It's just, I started a new project sometime where I wanted to see if I could get a dungeon generator to work, and I did. As well as get the player to be able to drop and pick up weapons to fight the enemies. Other than that, there wasn't much to it yet, just some very basic foundational mechanics. I had, I had learned how to make this dungeon generation with Blackthorn Prod's video, and it makes up pretty good tutorials, and sure taught me a few things, so check them out, will ya? As of what I actually did on day one is, spoiler alert, not a whole lot. <laughs> just some sitting in my chair, a few broken keyboard keys. So why is he shooting? And a sort of functioning shop. So this is the shop right now. And if we want this, yeah, as well as a new enemy. So, also a funny thing when you spawn a thing in this room, uh, the doors. I'm pretty sure the doors will actually be locked. Yeah, yeah. Since we we have an enemy in the starting room, the doors are locked. So why is he shooting? Oh, has gun. Oh my god. Okay, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, as you can tell, I'm I'm not great. But now. It should work. Yeah. Yeah. On to day two. Day two is full packed of content. Now you must be shivering, thinking, oh, what could he possibly have added? Well, here it is. You pick up the perk. The perk is cube. Yeah. That's right. One cube that acts like a perk buff. I'm just gonna pick this one up right now. Are we doing three damage? No, that's a yeah. lot of <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> uh, look at damage! <laughs> it actually says infinity. That's so funny. Oh, I yeah. We have an equation, and I'm, I'm just making the equation, making it equal that equation. So I don't, that's why I don't understand why it's adding so much. I literally see no reason for this not to work. What about you? That does not look like three damage. Times three damage by two. And since the SMG damage is one, now it's two. And if we go and get ourselves a sniper, we do 14. Look at that. I actually impressed myself by somehow spending two hours. It's, oh my God. Yeah, next day. Okay, day three, I kept working on the perk thing. Day four, I made a new weapon class, the rifle. I've created a new gun, but it's also a new class. The rifle class. As well as adding the subsuck machine gun. I'm not sure if that name is even accurate. I think it means fast, so it shoots fast. This is the subsonic machine gun, and it just shoots really fast. The bullets are decently quick also. For day five, I made the perks work better, so they have they should be more functional. Should be. We pick it up and nothing changed. <laughs> I, I, like it actually should just be working. But uh it, it don't. Really? Really? We're, we're not even getting bras. Huh? Six, huh? Ten, huh? Yes, it's adding. <laughs> Alright, next one. Hey! Look at that! Look at that! That's beautiful! Let's go. Probably gonna come back and bite me in the- oh. At some point? Okay, maybe that works great. Works better. Mm. 
For day 6, I added this neat text that appears over weapons and items, which displays the stats of weapons and or a general description. Yeah, and then it says 30 for its damage. Sick! Look at that. Now that is a bit weird, because there's a bunch of numbers there. So... Great. So now the fire rate only has two decimals. Look at that. That is beautiful. And now and if we pick it up and shoot, you'll see that the shot spread is kind of whack. I also won't be covering every single detail what I did every day, but if the addition has any slight significance, then I'll probably mention it at least. Day 7. Rooms have roofs. That took longer than expected. That took like 20 minutes, but we don't have a roof. What the f- The roof is good! What do you mean? Like what? Why doesn't the room just come with a roof anyway? Why doesn't the room come with a roof anyway? Because I made the room. Oh. I'd never put a roof on it. Oh, right. That's because we already... Right, I... I'm just... Let me... We already have this room down. So that's why the prefab wants to be weird. I, I, I just gotta fix it manually. Like that. And the web, the shops spawn in their own room. I even made some new weapons. I fixed the shops. So shops will no longer be randomly spawning in whatever room they please. Sorry, what? The, the, okay, not only is the shop not rotated correctly, you gotta fix that. But there's not, it's not supposed to spawn a shop in the boss room. I guess he, hmm. I guess he's here because the shop room was the last room generated. I don't know, that's kind of funny. Or maybe I should just make the shop room a uh, top and bottom. The shop room leads to the next room. So, on to day 8. With week 1 now being over, I decided to pick up the pace a bit. So these next few days I did a bit more, which is really good. Shops now spawn in straightaway rooms, and weapons now have rarities. So I just came up with an idea. It might be a cool idea to have a gun that uh, is not guaranteed to shoot every time. Actually, hmm. That is so many rooms. Oh shit. It won't break unless it spawns infinite. Oh my god, it's still going! <laughs> wow, look at that, that's funny. The smallest map. I'm gonna the shop spawn on these straightaways. And now there's still some stuff to fix. The shops are kinda big. I have made some new weapons. Nothing too crazy. Basic weapons. We got pistols, we got Rifles, we got launchers, we got shotguns, and we got SMG. And they all have between five rarities. But what I might do is just set up another time set up another timer and keep working, because I kinda of feel like doing that. So that's what we're gonna do. Alright, great! Right, shotgun uh, weapon spawn. Yes. Yes, okay now now we're progressing. On day nine I the shops can preview what weapon you're going to get. So this is probably a good lore dump for all of you that's interested. This uh, game right now is actually called Every Second Count because I was intending on this game being like, you you know, every second the enemies get stronger. So you, you, you gotta be quick. You can't just be super slow. Oh, this room doesn't have a roof. This room also doesn't have a roof. Something I also want to bring in soon is VFX. So uh, I think my unity froze. Just as I was almost, I almost got done with it. Well, time to just pray that we didn't lose too much progress. In the looks of things, I don't know if we even lost anything. This thing, please tell me this is it. Come on. No. Why is it turned off? Nope. Is it really just that easy? Is that really, what oh my God, that might've just been what I needed to do. No. Still, still no. Come on. Please. Yes. Day 10. Perk shop is now a go. And so you can purchase perks from the shops. You also get to choose a starter weapon. Now, and there is also a chance for one to be a legendary. Isn't that just fun? Okay, great. So we now have a perk shop and a gun shop. The reason I have that one hour timer at the start is just, it keeps me... It, it makes it easier for me to track time. Damage up increases damage to your weapon. Your uh, or wait, no. Made perk shop. You can now buy two perks. Damage up increases damage to weapon you're holding. Damage multi up increases damage multiplier to weapon you're holding. On day eleven, I added a new perk that increases fire rate, as well as making the cute the perk 
shop show what kinds of perks you're getting. Much love. It's about that time again where I'm becoming some 90s. Because that's kind of the main issue. Like, I, I want the shop to be able to tell you, oh, here, the, hey, there, here's the gun you're buying, by the way. But uh, also, you know, you get to see what it is. Also, I fixed the starter shop. The starter shop is great. Instead of, you know, having three set weapons, uh, it's uh, three random weapons, but you only get to pick one. If you're lucky enough, you can get a legendary in your starting shop in your, as your starter weapon. If, when I actually publish the game, I wonder if I should keep this in. So like, people who speedrun my game, they have to reset until they start with a legendary. Oh! oh! Look at that. But we have random rarity now. But we can also get the specific thing. So it, it'll just, you know, get around a perk. Any perk in the game. And then I'll display the info here. Uh, but then there's also one more, and that is the random perk, but you know what rarity it's gonna be. Oh, and but okay, why? Yes. No? Oh, it actually, it actually does work. You can pick this up that already has insane fire rate, and then like give it even crazier fire rate. <laughs> day 12 is a pretty chunky day, I gotta say, even though I barely did anything, so. What did I do? Well, I added the VFX, of course. Thanks to an awesome guy named Gabriel Aguar, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which I will link in the description to his YouTube. I was able to get some really good effects to use for my game. I'm not sponsored, of course, but if you're interested in making a game and adding cool effects to your game, I highly recommend checking this guy out. All right, so this is gonna be a short update. Uh, I didn't feel like doing too much. However, this is a quite an important piece of the puzzle. Check it out. So we, we just have this really cool, like this actually looks sick, like, I don't know, it, it actually feels awesome. It's day 13 and we finally have reloading, a crucial feature every game with weapons that shoot has. I'm very happy about this, in case you can't tell. We're gonna be implementing reloading. Uh, I only got an hour today because I, I don't know, I was lazy today. Recently I thought of a really cool idea uh, for a we type of weapon, instead of it using you know, regular ammo it could be battery charged so it could be like maybe stronger than normal it'll have battery life so as soon as you pick it up it'll start running low running down or maybe it, won't, oh, it only runs down once you're shooting okay so here i have made a simple ammo and reload oh interesting it actually seems to right that doesn't make sense we're shooting i don't have any way to showcase the amount of bullets but you'll see that it'll stop firing. Like I'm constantly holding down left click. It automatically reloads. I, I, I will also add it so you can reload on your own, but... Okay! However, when I get to zero, I can't shoot. And it there's a reloading thing. It also says reloading. Should I keep that? <laughs> reloading. Yeah, let's get some fire upgrades. <laughs> we just empty a mag like that. <laughs> <laughs> this does make the game feel a lot better though, having this reloading. Oh my God. Check it out. And then when we reload, it will be reloading to how much we had in the reserves, because we had less than 30. And then after we, you know, run out of ammo... <laughs> it's the end of week 2, and for day 14, I improved the info text on weapons. Alright. <clears throat> Welcome back to more Unity. I did do something off camera. Not, nothing much though, I just changed the bullet. The main thing was <clears throat> change up the info text. So now you can see magazine size and max ammo of the gun, and all, as well as reload speed. I also changed the fire rate in seconds because I'm pretty sure that is. I mean, I know I made it, but I'm fairly confident that, that how that's being calculated is in seconds. Not really much else to it. Let's keep going. Alright, now for section 3. Day 15, I had to fix the door locking script, which is responsible for locking the doors when enemies are in a room. Okay, I don't even know what this is supposed to be, but that's really weird. 
We're actually, wait a minute. Uh, so, <clears throat> the way the enemies are spawning right now is we still have the nine spawn points. But on each nine of the sp each of the nine spawn points, we are first rolling if we will spawn an enemy there. There's a 30% chance it won't spawn an enemy. Day 16, the enemies can now drop new stuff. And they can drop things as items like perks and consumables, even weapons. Yo, 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 it's about that time again where we try to make more game. Wahoo! What is this even? When we kill an enemy and it drops a coin, you'll see we will get five. And I even made it so they're like kind of random position so it looks cool and uh, we even got stuff here we got a, we got a common upgrade we got an smg here on day 17 i added a great addition extra consumables such as ammo fully reloads a weapon to full and different temporary buffs like damage up increased damage for a period of time hold on a minute i'm gonna i, I think i just cracked the code look at it look at this pick up bind pew pew drop it pew. Pick it back up. We've got this ammo pickup, and it uh, it works. Uh, let me just and then we pick it up, and we get our ammo back. Great, awesome. Damage is thirty-seven point five. Okay. And then it dropped back down to thirty. Okay. Money, money. That is so cool. By the way, I I, I just absolutely love. When you can shoot day 18, shop now has a limit to how many can spawn at max 3, as well as adding a general shop that sells items like perks and weapons. And we have a shop so we can see how many are spawning. 3. We got 5 shop rooms. And as you can see, we only see we only see 3. Great! That is awesome. Here we go, general shop. And this shop is bigger. And this shop guarantees to sell you two consumables, two guns and two, or two weapons, and two perks. For day 19, I did some crazy, right? However, this is a very important day. This is when I began attempting to add the ever so elusive inventory system. Now, I had looked at a few tutorials, but it was just a little too difficult to follow, honestly. So I sat there and thought, I'm just gonna have to do it myself. It's time, um, it's time to attempt to make an inventory system and you may be interested to hear how in the blue am I gonna do that alright so here's the plan we're gonna have a list any pick up will be added to this list we are gonna be putting this inventory management script on the player alright let's see if this is gonna work what I'm not done yet, but just to get you caught up to where I'm at right now, uh, we have. Okay, never mind. That doesn't even work right now. Uh, that's fine. We're gonna fairly simple. Just showcasing. You know, a lot of the UI we have right now is not gonna be part of the main game. Uh, it's just I, I don't really know too much about UI yet, but I will make it look good eventually. Anyway, but right now we have. So we know what slot we've selected. We also know what weapon we're selecting. We also have this, you equip weapons, and that's the weapons you'll switch between, but then you also have inventory items, so weapons you pick up will also be part of your inventory. This might just work. Dual rifle, which is definitely is there. The pistol also. Okay, now. Day 20, and I thought it would be fitting to just read what I wrote down on this day. <clears throat> Had my head explode trying to make the inventory system function. An endless struggle. Just pain, just pain, and I mean, just pain. But I have now somehow gotten most things of what I got for the inventory to work. Which these are, choose what weapon slot to equip weapons from the inventory to. Had to fix dropping of weapons since the inventory management is now the main controller of what weapon is active. You can now also see what weapon is in what slot on the UI, which probably will get changed to some images later instead of the weapons. Name in the text. And many, many, many issues I had to overcome due to my lack of knowledge. Inventory is not finished yet. Yay. I, I was looking up how to do this. If that weapon already is in the list, like when we're trying to change the slot, and if it already is in the list, then what we will do is I'm trying to find out the, 
where it is in the list of all position so i know what's what in the list move uh, it just really fascinated me that as soon as i typed in position equals equip weapons it already knows i want index of because i just looked it up and index of is how you can supposedly get it okay this is really janky but uh yeah you, you, you can see what the things are right here no way it's just working now what yeah i I, I I can't figure this out. I it's 18. If you look at the time from the first clip, like I had had the po recording paused. I can't for the life of me figure this out. You may be wondering what am I trying to figure out? I don't know. I, I I'm overcomplicating this. I'm also not as very smart. So until you drop a weapon, okay. Uh, total weapons is three, even though I only have two elements. That's a bit weird. Also. Both weapons are being held. As you can see. I think I'm gonna take a break from this now. Day 21. Dollar the final day for week 3. And I made it. So by selecting an inventory slot and pressing F with a temporary buff. Which will then use it. Also the buffs for now do stack. So you could pop 100 for like infinite damage. So it bugs out if um, you, you pick up an item first. If you don't have a weapon and you pick one of these up. It will bug out. So we pick up all of these and you can see. Now as we scroll through our inventory, we can see all of them. And then we use up all of the multi-shot, and now look. Oh you can't really see the bullets too well, but you can see it's shooting a lot of bullets. Day 22. May ammo pick up and heal work with new inventory, as well as adding an outline to some items. I haven't done anything too major, but I looked up uh, on how to do a cool thing. Um, I've added outlines to these. They look pretty neat, I'd say. I don't know if it's the style that I'm gonna be, you know, going for, but for now, they can look like this for now. Day 23. Tried mindlessly to fix a bug which was causing like every consumer to just not work at all. When stacked or used, when it's stacked or not to work. Okay, what? I'm reading. Uh, okay, when it's stacked but work individually. Just really silly things and excruciating pain. However, in the end, I think all the five consumable perks work as intended. You pick up two ammo pickups, you try to use one right now, it doesn't work, great. Pick up a weapon, use an ammo, works. Use another one, doesn't work, good. You shoot, reload. Use it. Doesn't work, doesn't work. Does it work? Doesn't? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Missing gun ammo ammo boom awesome reload really really huh oh okay so do perk line forty five is happening okay all right all right okay all right okay okay so it's this that's getting screwed. Yeah, I can't figure out how to fix this. I, I'm actually... Okay. What... The hell? What did I even say? Uh, coloration. Yeah, col coloration. And delete this. Oh. Oh, guys, I just... I realized. It's always because I'm so not smart. Oh my god. The, the things it's spawning have a default value of stack size is zero. I think I have come to a conclusion that not only am I stupid, but I did solve it. I did solve all the issues. So check this out. Ammo, ammo, refill, shoot, reload, and then we're gonna use ammo again. Boom, and look at that. It didn't work. Guys, I think my small brain finally figured it out. Now I know this is the third time I'm saying this, but if I if we if I now use two ammo pickups right here and I don't get an error, one, two. Oh my god. Day 24. May enemies have health bars? And the health bar will disappear if they haven't taken damage for a bit. This is quite a big improvement. I am really happy with this. This is nice. 
it's not, it doesn't look like amazing, but so enemies have no health bar, right? But now when you shoot them, there will be a health bar up, health bar that appears, and uh, after three seconds the health bar goes away. I'm gonna try and see if I can make the health bar like fade away, but for now, every enemy has a health bar that you can see, and that is really awesome. The boss. As you can see, he has quite a bit more HP. He has a lot of HP. There we go, now we're, we're doing so much damage. <laughs> Day 25. Tried to fix issues with temporary buffs, but couldn't. <laughs> and today, it's still not fixed. So, yeah, on day 26, I asked my friend what he wanted to see me add, sort of like a challenge or just a fun thing. And he said elements. So I added fire, water, and get this ice. The weapons for now will receive a random element, which then will be applied to the projectile. We have just made history in this game. I've got everything to work now. So, what I, what I just did was I added uh, elemental attacks. The weapon will have its elemental ID. Elemental ID is fi one is fire, two is water, and three is ice, and zero is nothing. I got this to work really quickly. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's see if it works. Change the weapon, the weapon's element. Not only should the projectile change, but also the flash. Look at that! Nice. Look at that! Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, man. So this is an ice weapon, as you can see here. Fire. Which looks the most fire. Fuego. Yeah. The new stuff I've done, I've added elements to all the enemies and also guns. But I also changed how the enemies look. Uh, in case I didn't tell it before in a different. Pretty awesome, except for the. Oh, that's cool. They stopped falling because they touched each other. We got a water rocket launcher. I don't. Actually, I don't know if the rocket launcher is gonna do damage. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the pretty has broken. Wait, did it, do, oh. did it do damage though? Oh, wait, 48? Wait, hold Actually, I think that's the normal damage. Yeah, I think that's the f day 27. Enemies can now have elements, so if an enemy is fire, it will take more damage from water weapons, as well as fixing elemental damage for the rocket launcher. So the AoE explosions applies all damage and such properly. I added item IDs to all the weapons. So. They're all gonna work fine, switching between the slots and such. But also now, as you can see, we have a fire uh, rocket launcher. We're gonna shoot this ice enemy. And look, we did 80 damage. But if we shoot the water enemy, we're gonna do 20. Boom. That's what I did. I'm gonna go to sleep now. I have a headache. <laughs> End of week four. And with that, it's day 28. And I updated the boss a bit giving it some more animation and it's being despawned until the player enters the room. And the enemy shooting script works similarly to the player's SHOOT! <laughs> Whoa. That is going kind of all over the place. Alright, so that's, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. And as you can see, there is no boss here for us to shoot. Like if we shoot right there, we know he's gonna be there. It's not, we're not doing any damage. But look, when we enter this room, there he is! Whoa. <laughs> what the? Did you see that? It just kind of slides on the ground? I don't know if it should be doing that. Day 29 and week 5 starts with a bang. Added coin flip shrine. It can be a good or a bad thing, but You'll have to play the game to find out what it does. <laughs> Only joking. You can buff your damage or increase. Those mean the same thing. You c it can buff or debuff on the weapon you're holding. And here it is. Coin of the flipping gods. Disturb at own risk. You see, they're the flipping gods because it's a coin flip. So yeah. And then when you use it, I haven't had any special effects. This either increases, or decreases, or increases. And I think we got the increase. Day 30, Coin Flip Shine now has an animation. I also fixed Raycast weapons, which are the laser weapons. Also, I had a new testing laser weapon. This, like, yellow explosion that you can see popping up here, right here, to show up where I'm aiming at. But 
I finally, my finally, my brain did a thing. My, my, my brain did a, you know, the brain thing where it figures out something. And I'm an idiot because in the script, it, and then we're instantiating the effect at hit, transfer position, and transfer rotation. Now, the problem with this is if we hit a thing like this floor, it will hit it. However, as you can see, wherever I shoot, it will always go in the middle. And that's because that's the middle of the thing. So, oh, um, okay, day 31. <laughs> Added charge weapons, pretty cool. Also, a new weapon, star cluster. I'm calling this weapon the star cluster. And I, and I intended it shooting something like this. Day 32. Fixed laser weapons and more and added a sniper enemy that will most likely not miss. I've essentially just reworked the enemy's shooting scripts. So he, he, he shoots five shots and then he, or like he shoots very slowly. And then uh, after five shots, he has to reload. Day 33. For this day, for this day, I added a laser beam attack. Not sure what that means but it might be for an upcoming weapon we can do that and then all we have to do now is just find a way to implement this into the projectile day 34 i fixed the permanent perks up so we pick up all of these nom 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 om nom nom om nom nom om nom nom look at that 33.79 boom you're resistant towards ice who cares you're Day 35, I added multi shot permanent perk. End of week 5. Yay! Alright, let's pick up a bunch of things. <gasps> oh my god. Wait. I think it's actually working like I wanted to now. Actually, I think this is much better. This might be. Yeah, I think that is much better. Alright, nice. We did it. Oh my god, we did it. Yes. I hope you're enjoying following along my progress. Day 36, two very cool things I did is, one, I added a flamethrower, which is pretty cool, or should I say, fire, <laughs> as well as finally making sure that my game doesn't have any errors. Most of the error these errors are NULL REFERENCE EXCEPTION, -y. and pretty much all of these are solved by putting if <laughs> x isn't NULL, which will check if the variable exists before trying to execute instead of executing it. And Unity screaming at you. Pretend this is a gun shop, and you go and buy this random uncommon weapon. It's gonna spawn a random uncommon weapon, and then this isn't gonna have the upgrades because this weapon didn't exist when I picked up those perks. And as you may, may remember, as it when you pick a perk up that gives stats, it just gives the stats immediately, and that usually works fine, except for the weapons that spawn later. So you buy a thing. This gun isn't gonna have the stat buffs, uh, but what I've done now, if no buff, then buff. The only thing that's different is the shoot effect. It will still like shoot orange fire, which kind of looks cool. Uh, but yeah, it just has it has a lot of ammo. It's a pretty big magazine ca capacity. Day thirty seven. On this day, all current errors have been have been terminated. Only when you press play, though, errors when playing the game might still occur. I did uh, fix up a lot of errors. I also added a flamethrower, so I'll, I'll show you that soon. So when you see me launch the game, one to like a hundred errors, which is a lot. You might seem like saying it's a lot, but it's, it's a, lot, a lot of the same stuff. I mean, it's nice that the errors don't stop the game from working, but that just kind of makes me ignore them. And I, didn't, I don't know how to fix them. There's nothing telling me how to fix them. Just ob object reference, not just the instance of an object. Like I've seen this a million times, this specific quote, this specific line. However, I don't see what's not set to an instance. Wait. Oh my god. Hold up. Oh, this, this might break the game. As you can see, we have now crashed. Oh my god. Uh, we should do like other equals. Not null and an other get component. Can we do that? Just three <gasps> Like there needs to be three conditions met. I wonder if that just fixes like all of my life's problems. Yeah, but other not null. Yes, we'll do just I guess we'll do if player isn't null. Is isn't null checking 
has been one of the craziest things. All right, I think I've done it. You know how earlier when, bro, what, what, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know why, it's, why is it shaking? Sometimes it doesn't do it, like now we're fine. Anyway, check this out, when we die with this script active now, look at this. Camera just go back to the player and then it works. It's really cool. Day 38 was adding enemy levels so they get buffed depending on what the enemy level is at. So when you beat the boss enemy, level increases for the infinite dungeon. However, PC crashed, project broke. So, gonna have to continue on the backup. Luckily, I made one on day 35 or 36. Um, welcome to day 38. PC crash. Project broke. Sad. Day 39. Added most things back. I have, might have missed some, but we should be back. And fully implemented enemies become stronger on each infinite dungeon boss kill. And so what should happen now is, he drops the teleporter, we use it, we get brought up back out to the other world, and then we can go back in through the teleporter, and then, and look at that, now it says enemy level 2. Nice. Okay, we should see that enemies are a bit more tanky, maybe. Yeah, that looks like more health. Day 40. Fixed performance issues. Game runs super smoothly now. Yay! It was all the prints and the scripts. <laughs> so, as you can see, it, the performance is horrible. If I go back to the other area out here, it's better, but still not perfect. If I go into an older build, you'll notice we're super good. I think I figured out why. As you can see, we're in the game and our frame rates are very, very good, nice. <clears throat> and, and what was causing all the lag, I mean, I guess it's not surprising, but it, it is all these prints that we're doing and debug logs. But uh, we do not need a lot of these to, I mean, I, I mainly had all these to make sure to just check what was happening. Like I didn't think printing this many times would be a problem. But I guess, you know, I guess it would be. So as you can see, we, we have zero errors. We got perfect frame rate, no errors. It's great. Day 41, I added resources such as Tryon and Diamond. What is Tryon? Well, it's three times as dense as iron, so it's uh, Tryon. Yeah. I've updated this, this uh, side of the map, the quote unquote city world. And I've also added new types of loot, uh, materials. Uh, so now that we actually have all the things here, it can spawn a perk, it can spawn a coin, it can spawn a weapon, it can spawn consumables. But for now I've just done one resource I came up with and then the rest are real resources. That I Day 42, I revamped the shop into a trade shop so you can also give items and sell and enhance. Exhance? What the heck did I write down here? Also right now, a problem I'm running into is uh, it's displaying the IDs. I don't know how to make the ID correlate to a name like oh if we're if, if you have to give item ID 252 I don't know how it's how to make it so it knows that 252 is a thing I might just have to add this to the information object and uh, not a kind of like a book or like a and this will also help other things that needs to look at items in the game and compare them so it can look it can compare this item ID and then see what has that same value in that list and then oh we just grab that item that game object and spawn it or take it away from you just a massive list of all the items and it have the information stored there day 43 I added the fully functioning trade shops, shop displays rarity of item you give and get. With this, items now have an assigned rarity and name within the item script. And if we do this one, we should see, my prediction is we're going to be at five total items. We'll have four less, four less rifles, but we'll still have three rifles and then we'll have a diamond. We did it. We did nice. it. We did it. You can now trade in weapons. Day 44. More adjustments on the shop. 
shop now displays stock amount, so there's a limit to how many times a shop and trader can be used until needed to restock. Also made it fully work properly. Woo! And the progress I've made is I've made some more adjustments to the shop. I've made it so the shops fully function now, or that these trades. And there's no errors. If you don't have the item, it simply will never go through. The A45, a big boss room. Currently trying to make the last room have a teleporter that brings you to the boss room. Added laser sights as a possibility to enemies. Added two new enemies. Elite sniper turret doesn't miss, has a laser sight. Needs to charge up before shooting. Tier 3 full auto turret. Fast firing ray turret with a laser sight. The, prim the primary focus is this right here. You may notice that there was a, the boss was there a second ago. This is the new uh, boss room. I have added a new type of portal, the dungeon boss portal. And it looks like this, and oh, it's gone. <laughs> and when you interact with it, it'll bring you to the boss room. And since there's only going to be one boss room in every dungeon, then you don't have to worry about such a thing. Day 46. Added armor to both enemies and player. If you have any amount of armor, when you are hit, ignore damage and reduce armor by one. Added defense to both enemies and player. Defense decreases or increases if value is below one, any damage taken. And added health bar for player health and armor. And also made the boss room spawn higher in the map, otherwise it hit a door locker on the dungeon below and did a weirdness. Today, you may notice my player has armor when you get hurt. Anyway. Uh, whoa, what? Whoa. What the hell? There we go. I now have health bars. Look at that. Oh, that's really cool. I really like that. Day 47. This day has some nice juicy content, such as a added a such as a railgun weapon that shoots a ray projectile which pierces enemies. So many issues. But I fixed it for the most part and it works great. So I have added a new weapon, the legendary railgun. It's not finished yet, but what it does is it, it pierces. But as you can see, whenever I shoot, you'll see the five health parts appears, which the, that's the pierce cap. I can also change how how much we. Um, so like if I aim over here, you'll see that it won't hit. Uh, only hit like a few ones. Day 48, added a charge meter, so you know how much you've charged or charged weapon. Added laser piercing to enemies as well as an enemy that uses this. Subject 1, charge bar. Any weapon that is charged... Actually, I don't know, did I... I don't know, did I talk about... Yes. It looks like a mess. Wow, oh, they're just eliminated the player immediately. Oh, wow. So, there you have it. A new enemy, the laser turret. Day 48. Added the charge meter. No. Day 49. Add the spear to every AOE explosion to indicate area of destruction. It works for both players and enemies. I had to fix the spear so the explosion radius is halved so it matches with the radius of the spear explosion. Fix the ray pierce bug. End of week 7, this was re a really good week. Almost been the week I made the inventory system, honestly. Rocket launchers like this have explosions. And so what I've done today is, whenever you cause an explosion, like a, that has an area of, of effect, it will create... Oh right, this thing is like really OP. You will see an area of, of effect. Now, that's very small. So attack radius does have to like 8. And now, this spear will be bigger. It decreases over time, size. We, anything we hit in this spear will take damage. So if we use a railgun, then you'll see this railgun is modified to be an explosive. So whenever I hit anything, there will be an explosion on them. Whoever is caught by the laser will also have an explosion on them. So check this out. See that, how there's another circle? The, the big cylinder, the previous the laser we just shot, and then there's a bunch of explosions on each of them. Very cool, I'm very happy about this. This is really cool. And it's even cooler when using this. So now we can still we can see how much we've charged. And then when we shoot it, we see the laser. And then we see exactly where the bullets are landing. And then the explosion radius of each projectile. 
super cool stuff. I'm I'm very happy about this. I yeah, uh, I'm 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 absolutely loving it. And I also fixed a small bug where it was applying ray piercing to every projectile. Yeah, that's day for nine. Day 50, basic enemy now have a proper melee attack and their range can be pre previewed with a cylinder which won't be in the final version of course and the enemy doesn't rotate the entire body towards the player if they are above but they can still attack upwards. Look, they will not, they don't look up. I'm above them, they don't look up, which is good. They are simply just casting a ray in front of them. Day 51, I had an ally. Look at him, he's like a pure and kind version of the enemy. Almost like he was originally corrupted. Also, when you get too far away, he teleports to you. Big, big things. Ally. Ally cube. Friendly guy just going to town. He also has, he has to reload, which doesn't really make any sense. Punching. Yep, those guys are definitely... So now let's go to the boss. Probably gonna die, but... We got the boys! <laughs> Day 52. The player now has an energy bar. This will be used for certain weapons and possibly other things. You see that we get an energy bar that appears. It recharge, it's recharging very slow. But I'm thinking energy can be used from anything from a weapon. In, in, in the game you will be able to find uh, battery packs that will increase your energy capacity. Day 53. Fix the battery energy bar as well as adding a perk that gives you battery. Energy. Day 54, improved info text about items, so it will now display if a weapon has AoE and how big AoE radius is, as well as if a weapon is charged or and how long the charge is. It will also display the name of the item specified in the item stack size script, which I'd also like to mention, I have been tracking the hours I've spent ev on every one of these days, and this day specifically I spent one hour only, and I got all this working. That's not bad. I adjusted the info text yet again of of weapons and really any item. You know how we put into the item stack size script a string, which was the name of the item. So that will now begin to display on every item, so weapons and things. But if we look at the star cluster, which has every like attribute a weapon can have, I believe, it's got AOE damage. It's got multi shot, so it's timed 10 multi shot. It's got AoE radius of 3. It's got charge speed. And it's got range, because it's a fast projectile. Now, a cool thing you can do shoot. I uh, accidentally closed the game somehow. Whoops. Now you'll see that the projectile is traveling. And <clears throat> the cool thing about this is do this, which is actually a really cool thing. I'm definitely gonna want this for some weapon. Day 55, added descriptions to all perks, as well as text that adjusts what it displays, like item name and the rarity. Power. And what I did today is I fixed, as I said yesterday, I was gonna fix the descriptions. of The rarity at the top is inputted by the script. The names are also inputted by the script. However, the description that's at the bottom is inputted manually. But you'll see we got hefty battery, we got mega battery, strength amulet, these things ha now have the, the proper names, shot shatterer, uh, cooling goo, strength amulet, and then we also, uh, I also named the uh, temporary buffs, and uh, yeah, this is, uh, we got common ammo box, refills ammo, then we have, uh, then we have duals destruction drink, for the multi shot, we then got, uh, Common pure, common purified pure salt water for healing 25% health. <laughs> then we have weapon coffee plus 25% fire rate for 30 seconds. And then we got common pugilist punch 25% damage for 30 seconds. And then we have a fragile cell. Day 56. Started on making a projectile loping script, so enemies and allies can shoot a projectile which has a curved path, sort of like a mortar. End of week 8.
I think it would be cool and a neat thing to mention that as of day 57, we're at 140 hours of game development. And honestly, I'm not sure if I have really accomplished as much as I should have. However, regardless, I'll try my best and keep moving forward. Day 57. Bang my head against the wall trying to figure out how to make the dang projectile follow the curved path like a mortar shell. Still need to work on it. Bruh. Fix everything. Multi shell works with mortar. Shot spread works with mortar. It's amazing. Now I just need to make enemies also be able to do so. Day 57. Add new enemy. Enemy mortar. Enemies can now shoot like a mortar with lobbed projectiles. So I just want to let you guys know I did some streaming today. Uh, I was playing Terraria. I I haven't. I don't know much about the game. Uh, this is. I, I just finished up. I think the seventh or eighth stream of it, and it's it's really good. And so, um, I, I it would be great if you came and say hello at some point. You gave me a follow. Day 50, 59. As a flying enemy, the enemy just jitter a little bit up and down. Maybe gotta fix that. But otherwise, pretty cool. If I go near him, you'll see that he'll start flying over to me. Now, the weird thing is, he does kind of jitter. As you can see, he does... Day 60. Added cool whip weapon. Animation kind of bad. Great! Really good! <laughs> Day 61. Added throwable bomb. Lamp oil bomb. Currently explodes on collision. Might change. Common item. Currently has nothing to do with lamp oil. Bombs. Uh, also, I forgot, I did add stack size, so you can see the stack size of things you're picking up. Like, technically the first item... Well, actually, now we have items. Day 62. Added new, more VFX to the project. Add new item. Lightning in a bottle. Still need to add the storm part, where it does damage multiple times and stuff. Later fix the throwable lightning in a bottle. And add new items. Lightning storm epic. And lightning typhoon in a bottle. Legendary. Each stronger than the previous. Three new items. <clears throat> lightning in a bottle. Every which is rare. Then we got lightning storm in a bottle. Which is epic. Uh, excuse, don't uh, don't worry about the game shaking. There's all war happening over there. Um, and then we got legendary. Legend lightning typhoon in a bottle. Is uh, you just throw it like that, and then you get a small little rain or a thunderstorm. Lightning storm. Uh, storm in a bottle, and it's thrown like that. It is just bigger, lasts longer, more damage. And then here is Typhoon. <laughs> I don't know if, I, if it's gonna do that but uh, all the time, but yeah, it flies up in the air. And then it just goes fucking nuts. Look how fast. This guy, this cube has 10,000 HP. So yeah, it's just dead. <laughs> Day 63. Fixed up some of the elemental effects interactions. Started adding debuffs and other effects from elemental attacks. End of week 9. Later. Day 64. We worked on a debuff and a buff system that is better than the current buffs. Also, so debuffs like weakness and poison can be applied through attacks. Day 65. I worked on the debuff system even more. Day 66. Would you believe me if I told you for this day I worked even more on the debuff system? Day 67. For day 67... I had this really crazy idea to add 20 new weapons and this is how I was going to do it. So first I need to work even more on the debuff system and then don't make the 20 new weapons. I also blue screened during the process. But I was able to recover. I had learned from last time. Never again. Day 68. There was a lot of issues with the debuff system so next day 69. Day 69. Didn't do a lot, but fixed the debuff applying twice bug, so yay. Forgot to put an else statement, so if so two if statements went through when only one should have. Day 70, this ad, they add something neat. Depending on what element the thing is, it can't receive certain debuffs, like if you have a fire element, you're immune to burn. Yeah, I know, there's a lot of days with only one hour. This is kind of like the one hour phase, I'd say. <laughs> Section 11, the debuff system works now, right? Right? Day 71. Developed even more on the debuff system. They still aren't fully working. I want at least these effects to work. Burn, water wet, frozen, weakness, vulnerable, and poison. And today I made the water wet and frozen work both of which add slow, but water adds less than, 
less slow than Frozen. Day 72. The effects still don't work. Nah, I'm only joking. They all work now. Day 73. The effects enemy is affected by will now display above their health bar. I'm really happy about the system I created to make this work. It's not too complicated, but it still feels like I accomplished a lot. Yeah. I can say this about a lot of things I've done here on my game, and it's just incredible. Day 74. I attempted to make it. AOE attacks also apply effects. Day 75. AOE attacks can now apply effects. And to quote my notes. But need to fix something with the stats. Since something is inconsistent. Somethingly something. -st. Yeah. Day 76. Now the AOE applies effects properly. And it's an alright system sort of. Copium. Day 72. 77. Started adding more effects such as weak armor. Which will work like poison. But only work against armor. And be more effective at taking armor out. One hour. Day 78. Develop more and effects. Day 79. Shock effect now works on player. Day 80. Weak armor now works, which decreases your armor over time. Inaccuracy increases shot spread. Shocked increases reload time when you're reloading and increases shoot timer, so next shot will be delayed. Day 81. Depending on the element the weapon is assigned, it will have effects now. As well as now there's a new elements, poisoned and electrified. Day 82. Add new weapon, shocker. Day 83. Added new weapons, swift spark and colossal multiplex storm. These apply shocked and shoot electricity. Day 84. All items now have a sell value, so the shop trader can just grab the value and either have you pay that to get it or receive that amount when selling. Closing in on very early release. Day 85. Added new resource. Dangerous material Y. It's worth a fortune. Fortune. However, if you take any fire damage, it will burn just slightly more, and definitely not as if you were on the sun. Day 86. For this day, I have a new weapon, Arm of Man Made Undead. It has a very slow charge rate, however, it has a massive blast radius, and it reflects poison and weak armor. And this was a suggestion I had gotten from a viewer during a stream. If you'd like to leave suggestions to my game, then feel free. Maybe even join a stream or, or two. Day 87. I tried adding a dash, and it's not so good. Disclaimer, this is not the dash I originally added. This is a more refined version. Our day 88. Started implementing a new laser weapon. Day 89. This is probably one of the coolest weapons in the game currently, and probably still to this day. Red laser ocelot is what it's called currently, and if you aim at an enemy whilst shooting the laser, it'll keep its beam on the enemy even when you take your aim off them. And it can even chain to different targets! So you can hit multiple enemies very cool. I love it. It doesn't actually like electrifyingly chain to different enemies, but it will stick onto multiple targets. Day 90. Beam weapons such as laser assault can now apply effects. Day 89. I fixed some jank with effects not being applied correctly with elements. This was the end of week 13. Day 92. I added so weapons can receive homing by simply turning homing on. Day 93. I added a new weapon. The spear spear. It's a melee weapon with decent range, since it's a spear. It also does hit multiple enemies, because it has a... It's piercing. Day 94. I fixed homing for ray lasers. I say I fixed the ray weapons locking up to enemies when homing, but clearly it doesn't... Clearly it doesn't work. Day 95. Enemies can now have extra drops, which this will most likely be more implemented later, since right now loot pools are like every item in the game. Almost. So with this, I can specify some enemy just drops. So like, some enemies drop limestone, and some others may drop diamond. You can also adjust the drop rates of each item on the enemy. Day 96. Speaking of enemies dropping loot, I fixed their current, current loot drop table, which is everything. But now they will have a chance to drop a resource, weapon, perk, and coins. Day 97. New weapon has been added on this day, called True Stick. Stupid high damage, slow fire rate, very limited range, and 200% stick. Day 98, I made a hotbar so you can easily see what weapons and items you have equipped, as well as know what you are switching to more easily. This is very cool, yay. End of week 14. It's day 99, I have added icons to each item, so every item should have its own icon for appearing in inventories and such. Day 100, here we are, the summit of 100 days. As you can probably see, this isn't quite the end yet. At the time of making this video, I have gone a lot of days over 100. So, let's go take a look. To begin with, 
On this day, I must not display their own image, and other image behind displays their rarity. Stay 101. Fix the pugilist punch, which is damage up, so it works on the effect system, and so it buffs correctly. Day 102. When using heal, you see green text. Fixed issue with shop trader that would break the game, and all a lot of other issues. I even started adding a new weapon, the frenzy, which summons allies. That's why I call it the frenzy. <laughs> I have made energy bar and allies, but nowhere to use them. So here we go. Now there is day 103. Frenzy is fully implemented, and if you can't afford a shop trader or you don't have energy, there will be text that appears. Day 104. Change the bridges, so you have to be at enemy level 2 for the bridges to the shops to rise up. Day 105. Made the shops inside the dungeon like shop traders. And that's it for week 15. Upload mm. mm. oh, die! We're currently at 212 hours. Also, just to know, I unfortunately kind of stopped doing a daily recording of what I did each day. Eventually, if not already by this point. It was uh, becoming a bit much for me with making sure doing all this work and doing real life work as well as making sure I was relaxed. So I'm sorry if I don't show every detail, but with that, let's crack on. And I thank you for sincerely for being here. Day 106. I had an intro since I will be uploading the game to itch soon. As well as fixing some issues with dropping weapons. I also made it so you can skip the intro by pressing E twice. And now you won't accidentally fat finger escape and quit the game. Because now you need to push it twice with a short delay in between. Day 107. I fixed even more errors. There was an issue with the player's death timer after the player dies, a timer starts and that was breaking just because it felt like it, I guess. <laughs> I also learned a lot of, of, learned about using developer builds to debug within a build and not just in an editor. And the big one of this day was I uploaded the game today! Yeah, I know, I know. I went one week over what I intended to be the upload day, but I had to get things right, at least since the game was a mess, and it still is, but if you're interested in what you have seen here, it would mean the world to me if you checked out the game on itch, itch.io. It would most likely be, there will most likely be more updates than you will see in this video, so thank you very much. You of course don't have to, but it, it, thank you very much for being here. Day 108. I actually just did a live stream showcasing the game and worked on, the, on this video. Well, not exactly this video, I did end up scrapping the old video project and started a new project with a changed plan on how to do it. Because, I knew this would not be as simple as just edit funny and get get to the end. Also, I know it may be not exactly related to the game dev, but you could call it, say that we did some playtesting. Day 109. I reworked ammo pickup, I had overlooked how it works after I made the change so you can equip any item to hotbar. As well as making your allies teleport to you when you right click. And now you can drop perks and materials. And items will also display stack size on info text. Day 110. Fixed up the dropping of perks with a slight rework, but still pretty much the same. There was an issue where if you already has, let's see, three of a perk and then pick up like a stack of two or more, it would only give one more. And weapons now display their stats better. And temporary buffs now all work. And even make a cool effect appear when used. Day 111. This was a pretty hype day, I gotta say. The day started off pretty slow, I mean, absolutely demolishing my brain into a wall, trying to make the thing happen, which was literally just changing a color through a script. Anyway, later I added a new weapon. The hexagon, the hex, hexagoner, or hexagoner, however you want to pronounce it, and it's really cool. And I had a design idea, and it looks great. And I didn't use a blender, <laughs> even though I probably should. I would say it's somewhat similar to the Yari launcher in Enter the Gungeon, which that weapon is also referenced within that game. Oh, I, did I mention the shots are homing? It, it, it's also not an exact reference in my game, but I, I'm inspired by it. Day 112. Well, I ended up yapping a lot on day 111. Anyway, today I spent 11 hours, and yesterday I spent 8 hours. So, cool. Yeah, maybe I need to speed up. Rebreak shock effect, so simply apply a period of time, you can't shoot. I fixed red laser ocelot to not break. Finally fixed a very annoying issue. Apparently if you have an item in your every hotbar slot and buy an item from the shop, that item cannot be equipped and just doesn't work. The issue was since every item you have is parented to an object on the player, some objects were assigned to the wrong parent. Fixed coin flip shine, it used to make 
you win every time. Now it's actually 50-50. And now for some real cool additions. New perks that increase defense to the player. Pr protective crust. Wall. And extraordinary charm of pumpkins. I also updated the dual rifle, which I want to be significant in some way, since the name of the game is currently dual cubes. Very riveting name, I know. For some reason, certain aspects, it feels like I've lost all my creativity. I also don't have a, even have a story. I do know that the current enemies are some sort of corruption or cosmic entity, and possibly whatever the dual could be is the lifeblood of what's going on here. It could be a different dimension, or even a reality. That is if those two things are even different. I could just be stupid. Anyway, the update to the weapon heavily increases its power, I get some flashy projectiles and high stats. However, you need high energy to get to use its full potential. Possibly the energy source the player could use could be harvested from the dual dimension. Again, I'm not fully certain about the path I'm taking. I might have made a huge mistake, a, hum a huge misplay even, but I do know one thing about myself. I can be very determined if this is what I want. Then I won't end my pursuit until I have reached my goal. And so should you, whoever is watching this. I'm sorry I have to go a little deep here, but the video shall go on. End of week 16. <laughs> updates, updates, UPDATES! Currently at 258 hours. Day 113. The target dummy at spawn now does something. I also have a new weapon. Question mark, question mark, question mark. It is extraordinary and has a very powerful homing projectile. Also, weapon, question mark. Can't drop from enemies. Some AoEs now have a shockwave to show its radius. Add an insanely cool effect to the boss, and when defeated, will have its spinning cubes speed up and shrink to disappear. Also, constant laser weapons like Red Laser Assault can't have multi shot, so instead, its damage is buffed further by multi shot. Zero hours, day 114. I did nothing, just didn't feel like it. Sorry. 10 hours, day 115. I spent 10 hours doing two things. Now, how would this have taken 10 hours? Well, I made the boss not boring. It can now move with insane patterns! As well as adding landmines. Don't step on them. Day 116. I had a new enemy that is very evasive and can teleport, but doesn't hurt you. I also made it so the boss can switch projectiles it shoots. And it has a chance to drop a weapon. The extraordinary Colonel Cube Crash. And it works similarly to how the boss shoots. Day 117. I added a black border around the selected hotbar slot and added animations to items on the floor. Day 118. This day is very important. To begin with, I started editing this video you're watching right now. But more importantly, I added one of the biggest problems I've never tried solving yet. Tell me, what is the most crucial feature ever added in gaming history? I'll give you a moment to think, or maybe even leave a comment if you want. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I believe the saving of your gaming progress might be the most crucial feature in most games. Of course, if you have a really fun roguelike game, you could get away with not saving progress. Possibly even some multiplayer games. However, even roguelike games, which usually have you resetting at every run, does save progress, whether it'll be playtime, enemies defeated, or skill points earned. And today is the day I went through the trouble of adding it to my game. Was I successful in this endeavor? Find out next time. Dragon Ball Z. Nah, I'm just kidding. Yes, I was successful. Now, I'd love to go all in detail because while this was possible thanks to Bracky's tutorial, it's not all the same since I needed to be able to save items in my inventory. And when using the save system in the tutorial, you can only store strings, floats, ints, and bools. If you don't know what these are and still watching the video, then don't worry. Strings can be letters like text, and floats are numbers that can have decimals. Ints are floats but cannot have decimals, and bools are simply true or false, on or off. Now, there is one saving factor with this, and that is how that is that you can make arrays with which are a list of these variables. So when the game saves, it grabs the coin amount and the enemy level. To save your progress so that's simple to save but in order to save your items i make two lists with the in integers that i add to the saved data the system i made works like this 
It first looks at the item ID of each item, since every item has an ID that I, I signed with within the item script I added to all items. <clears throat> so, if I have a weapon, a resource, and a perk, three things the list might look like. Three things the list might look like this: 504, 18, and 253. And then what's the second list for? Well, to get the stack size of each item. So that list might look like this: 1, 2, 14. So I have one weapon, two of the same perk, and 14 of this one resource. Now, how do I get these items when loading the game? It's very simple, luckily. On the loading to save data, I run a loop that gives you an item with the IDs saved on the list. Remember, the item compendium I made a while ago? The system looks through the compendium to find an item with X item ID. So in this case, it would be 504, and then it gives you the item as well as the stack amount. So, since 504 was the first value in the list, and 1 is the first value in the second list, you get 1 of that weapon. It's just that simple. I'm very happy about this, and I feel pretty proud of myself, honestly. The end. We're currently at 300 hours. So with that giga paragraph over that was significantly stretched out for no dang reason, we're at the end of the video. Now, as of the day I'm making this, I'm on day 132. Actually, let me correct that. I'm currently on day 138. Or 139. You might be wondering, why not continue? Well, there's a lot more to cover. So that's it. If you stay to the end, it would be so lovely if you could check out my game on itch. And play it, if you want, of course. If you encounter any issues, if you decide to play the game, let me know in the comments. Also, as I said before, I will hopefully fulfill my dream of creating an awesome game. I am really hoping I can do this. I will push on and I won't give up. If you have a goal or any, have anything you wish to accomplish and feel like it's never going to happen, here's my biggest tip I can give right now. You just need to start. Once you start, time will fly by like the days are milliseconds. It feels like I started on this project only last week, but it was actually over 100 days ago. Please chase your dream. People, thank you. Much love and don't forget to take care. There is just one more thing I'd like to show you.